Ask Reddit by Yeet42021. What are some ridiculous history facts? In 1895, the entire state of Ohio had only two cars. Both cars managed to still smash into each other. 101 years ago a massive tank of molasses burst open in Boston, causing a sticky wave that killed 21 people and injured well over 100. The Great Molasses Flood, https colon slash slash en dot m dot wikipedia dot org slash wiki slash great underscore molasses underscore flood closed bracket spread at about 35 miles per hour. Abraham Lincoln's son, Robert Todd Lincoln, was present at three different presidential assassinations. After McKinley, he decided not to accept any more invitations. Also also, Robert Lincoln's life was saved by John Wilkes Booth's brother, Edwin, a famous actor, who pulled him out from a train that was about to drag him under its wheels, https colon slash slash www.historinit.com slash edwin dash booth dash save dash robert dash todd dash lincoln ns dash life dash two dot htm close bracket dot when alexander the great was a child he was reprimanded by a teacher for wastefully throwing two whole fistfuls of rare incense into a sacrificial fire when he was an adult and captured gaza which happened to be the prime agricultural source of the incense he wasted he sent home 18 tons of it home to the same teacher as a gift the first known political cartoon is Egyptian, and shows Hatshepsut, the only woman pharaoh, pegging her lover and chief architect Senmet. There's a children's book called, The Pharaoh's Secret that kinda gets into this. Interesting book. The entire country of Malta was awarded the George Cross for its efforts in WWII. It's still on their flag. Interestingly enough. It sounds like the conditions for the awarding of the cross are kind of similar to how the Knights Hospitalier operated back in the Sword and Shield days. If you're unfamiliar, they were more or less a precursor to the Red Cross and the first real paramedics. Cole Marx's great great comma grandson has a YouTube video of him doing Parker, called exclamation marks. I watched it and it's not actually bad or anything. Just funny considering his lineage. Former US President Andrew Jackson was approached by a man who pulled a gun on him. Smaller history fact this was the first assassination attempt on a US president. The man pulled the trigger and the cap went off but the gunpowder failed to light. The man pulled a second gun and fired, but the gunpowder again failed to light. The assassin tried to get away, but not before Andrew Jackson got him and beat the shit out of him with a cane. He also once won a duel by simply letting the other guy shoot him. He knew it would be a hastily aimed shot and probably not deadly. So, he let the other guy just straight up shoot him, then he carefully aimed and shot the other guy dead right there. He recovered from the wound rather quickly as well. Potatoes were not very popular as a food in France. Like they were seen as fit only for animals. Not only that but they were considered generally not digestible by humans. So a pharmacist named Parmentier knew they were good food and wanted to popularize them among the working class. So he got a two-acre farm to grow potatoes and placed armed guards around it at all times. People assumed armed guards meant something very valuable was growing there so they began to steal the potatoes. That's how potatoes became popular in France's working class. He also told his guards to accept bribes and to not actually catch anyone. During the Cold War, there was an idea to drop XL condoms labeled medium onto the Soviets to make them think we were anatomically superior and be more afraid of fighting us. Easily my favorite part of American history. Whoops I dropped my monster condom for my magnum dong. American military members were also killed during the nuclear bombings of Japan. When American High Command was informed of their presence their response was something like, Targets remain unchanged. Nearly 800 Americans died training for D-Day. Pepsi once had the sixth largest military in the world after the price of Russian vodka couldn't cover their deal for Pepsi products. 
so they traded 17 submarines, a frigate, a cruiser, and a destroyer for a trade deal. Fun fact, the president of PepsiCo at the time told the national security advisor we are disarming the USSR faster than you are. Gorbachev appeared in a Pizza Hut commercial. Hitler, Stalin, Trotsky, Freud, and Tito were all living in the same area of Vienna in 1913. Like the Friends theme song. General Omar Bradley was stopped by MP during the Battle of the Bulge in WW2 due to them thinking he was a Nazi infiltrator. The irony was that he was stopped because he correctly identified the capital of Illinois as Springfield when the officer thought it was Chicago. I've met plenty of people who thought Chicago was the capital of Illinois just because it's our most populated city. Montenegro technically was in war with Japan for 101 years and they signed a peace treaty in 2006. Montenegro was allied with Russia in Russo-Japanese war and they declared war on Japan but they forgot to peace. Not the only time this happened in history, the Scilly Islands were at war with the Netherlands for quite a while, if I recall correctly. Edit, Wikipedia link some people dispute it, but here's a wiki link. HTTPS colon slash slash en dot m dot wikipedia dot org slash wiki slash three underscore hundred underscore and underscore thirty underscore five underscore years percent two seven underscore war. Further edit, list of similar wars. HTTPS colon slash slash en dot m dot wikipedia dot org slash wiki slash list underscore of underscore wars underscore extended underscore by underscore diplomatic underscore irregularity in 1967 Australian Prime Minister Harold Holt disappeared while swimming in the ocean he was presumed drowned so naturally that year we named a swim center after him in memoriam edit added his name which I meant to do when I wrote the post but obviously my brain snapped midway through the sentence and I forgot it. Harold Holt. It should be added that he was a keen outdoorsman and a spear fisherman. He was a very good swimmer and would often swim out deep at the beach. The day of his disappearance there was others with him, but only one other swimmer who felt an undertow and decided it was too dangerous to go out. Holt swam out and was reported to have appeared as though he was caught in an undertow but didn't struggle or wave for help. Then he just disappeared into the surf. There are lots of conspiracies about what actually happened to him. But nothing concrete ever has been found. He just disappeared forever. Once FDR died, Truman didn't know about the Manhattan Project, but when he found out he subtly tried to tell Stalin they were working on something big. Stalin was like yeah dude, I knew before you did, since he had so many spies in America. Oh Truman. Henry Cavendish. The man who was vital in the discovery of gases and discovered hydrogen. He inherited a ton of money from his uncle, and built a special castle, I think. He was incredibly introverted, so it was designed so that he never had to meet or see any of his servants. He communicated with them through notes only. He did, however, appreciate other scientists coming to visit and talk. His works mostly came after his death of course, but I found this guy interesting. Hannibal's defeat of the Romans at Lago Trasimeno. By leaving soldiers to light fires in the hills, he created the illusion that his army was three days march away when tens of thousands of men were actually concealed in the hills just above the lake. The Romans were surprised on the shore and trapped between the onslaught and the water. In their armor, half of the 30,000 Roman troops were either killed in battle or drowned in the lake 5,000 were captured and the other 10,000 staggered back to Rome creating panic that the greatest army in the world had just been handed their ass by a Carthaginian upstart. It was the greatest ambush in military history. During the Viking era, there was a leader named Sigurd. He allied with a Viking warlord named Thorstein. He wanted to conquer more land and expand his territory. He had already been very successful in doing so. This was until he feuded with another leader called Marlbuktooth or Marl Tusk, 
as his front two teeth were abnormally large and buck-toothed. They decided to settle their matters on the battlefield and both agreed on bringing 40 men each for the battle. However, Sigurd ignored the terms and brought 80 men. Bucktoothed had realized he had been betrayed but did not give up. They killed a number of Sigurd's men, but alas, they were overpowered and were all killed. Here's the catch, after the battle, Sigurd ordered his men to behead all the enemies and tie them to their saddles as trophies. However, as Sigurd rode home in victory, the severed head of Bucktoothed pierced his leg, which lead to an infection, killing him soon after. This can't be fucking real. The capture of the Dutch fleet at Helder on the night of the 23rd of January 1795 presents a rare occurrence of a naval battle between warships and cavalry, in which a French revolutionary Hussar regiment captured a Dutch Republican fleet frozen at anchor between the 3 kilometers, 1.9 miles, stretch of sea that separates the mainland port of Den Helder and the island of Tessel. After a charge across the frozen Zuider Zee, the French cavalry captured 14 Dutch ships and 850 guns. A capture of ships by horsemen is an extremely rare feat in military history. https colon slash slash en dot wikipedia dot org slash wiki slash capture underscore of underscore the underscore Dutch underscore fleet underscore at underscore den underscore helder. Sounds like something that would happen in a civilization game. The state of Washington was named Washington instead of Columbia so that it wouldn't be confused with the District of Columbia, as it was commonly known at the time. There used to be bread stamps, burned into a cooked loaf of bread, to avoid bread fraud, as the government supplied the wheat flour, but some bakers tried to use sawdust and other ingredients in the bread to make the wheat last longer. The bread stamps were baker specific, so they could track down where any tainted bread came from. If they were caught, they had to move to another town to make bread, or wait three years to continue making bread if I remember correctly. Bread laws were huge throughout most of history nowadays, the idea of the government so strictly regulating an industry that they are forced to sell at a certain price seems odd, but in a time when food shortages were always a danger and food reserves were slim, bread becomes a very important commodity. It's how the Roman emperors kept Rome quiet despite the fact it was such an absurdly huge city literally bread and circuses. Free bread, free water, and free entertainment. Colombia has a period in history literally called the dumb homeland period because of how incredibly dumb politicians acted at the time. How long ago? Herostratus is the guy who burned down the temple of Artemis. The only reason he did it was to have his name written down in history. A law was also passed that made it illegal to write down his name for just that reason. Obviously, it is not enforced in modern times. At one time there was not only a pope and an anti-pope but also a counter-anti-pope. If a pope and an anti-pope meet, do they annihilate each other? Thomas Jefferson and John Adams died on the same day. The 4th of July, 1826. The 50th anniversary of them both signing the Declaration of Independence. Adams's last words were, Thomas Jefferson survives. He was wrong by about 5 hours. The first bomb dropped on Berlin by the British during WW2 claimed no human casualties. But it did kill an elephant. Never forget. Pythagoras drowned a student to death because a student proved the existence of irrational numbers which contradicted Pythagoras and his cults, the Brotherhood, beliefs. Well fuck his stupid theorem then. The Battle of Bull Run, during the American Civil War, was called the Picnic Battle, because so many civilians from Washington went on picnics on the sidelines and watched. But once the battle actually started, and the Union started to get its ass kicked, they all ran away, running over injured soldiers and dead bodies and generally disrupting the battle. This was actually a relatively common thing during the Civil War, I know it happened at Gettysburg too. Fucking tourist. 
Claudius Drusus died in AD 20 from asphyxiation when he tossed a pear in the air and caught it in his mouth. The pear tree was put on trial, found guilty of murder, and destroyed. Two important questions. 1. How large was this man's throat? 2. How small was this pear? When the Romans laid siege to Themyscira, a real place weirdly enough, they attempted to tunnel into the city. The Themyscirans released bears into the tunnels. Thus Tunnel Bear was invented. Ancient Greek and Roman marble statues were actually originally painted and were colorful a lot of the statues paint faded away and went away over time some people cleaned off the paint thinking it was debris or dirt and other people just plain cleaned and removed all of the paint off of them because they preferred the look of white marble. Rome was actually a very colorful city and it wasn't all made of just boring plain white marble. I'm taking a course in classical archaeology and it's almost painful to sit through the my professor discuss what the early archaeologists did. There are literally entire books of anecdotes of this sort on Ben Franklin. That man was the OG of trolling. He was so good at trolling under the pen name of a female, Silence Doggard, he received several marriage proposals. Only then did he reveal her true identity. Original Catfish. As Saint Lawrence was roasted to death on a gridan, he is said to have remarked to his torturers I am cooked on this side, turn me over. Saint Lawrence is the patron saint of cooks and comedians. The first comedy roast. I bet Jeff Ross was there. The Pastry War. A French pastry chef who lived in the outskirts of Mexico City wrote a letter of complaint to King Louis Philip claiming that in 1832 the Mexican army damaged his shop and stole several cakes. For which he was demanding 60,000 pesos from the Mexican government who ignored the request. After this incident, King Louis Philip decided to block all ports of entry in the Gulf of Mexico which later on led to the French invasion of Veracruz. 1927 Liberian elections were referred to as the most rigged ever by Francis Johnson Morris, a modern head of the country's National Elections Commission, and also made it into the Guinness Book of Records as the most fraudulent election ever reported in history, as despite there being fewer than 15,000 registered voters, King received around 243,000 votes, compared to 9,000 for Fortner. The Death of Cato he killed himself by ripping out his internal organs one by one. When he passed out, the Roman doctor sewed his wound shut. But for just a few seconds, he woke back up and tore the organs out again. The shortest war occurred between Zanzibar and the British Empire, lasting around 45 minutes. Both the British and the Zanzibar Sultanate fielded a couple thousand men with a few boats, However the war ended with a single Brit wounded, meanwhile the Zanzibarians suffered 500 dead or wounded, including civilians, and their entire navy, a yacht, two boats and a shore battery, gone. The Battle for Castellata, https colon slash slash, en, dot wikipedia, dot org, slash wiki, slash battle underscore for underscore castle underscore at a close bracket. A castle in Austria where the Wehrmacht and Americans fought side by side with French POWs against the SS. Seriously, someone should make a movie about this. And X200B. Geographics has a fantastic video on it, https colon slash slash www.youtube.com slash watch question mark 7P3B0VBXKOK close bracket and X200B. Edit, you tactical toast 7 wrote a much more in-depth explanation of the story, go check it UTM medium equals web 2x. It's the American troops and German army fighting together at last. The British once sent a guy to China as a spy so he would uncover the secrets of making tea. The British did as they pleased back in the day. When the Netherlands was occupied by Renards in 1940 many people fled to Canada, including Princess Juliana of the Netherlands and her husband Prince Bernhard of Lippbeestefeld. Their daughter, Princess Marguerite was born in Ottawa. 
not knowing if the baby would be male, and hence the heir to the throne. Canada declared the maternity ward of the Ottawa Hospital extraterritorial, which means it became international territory. This meant that the baby would derive its nationality only from its mother, making it 100% Dutch. I'm writing a paper on this for uni right now. The Dutch still send thousands of tulip bulbs to Ottawa as a thank you every year, and as a result Ottawa has its own tulip festival. It is told, by Herodotus, that when Xerxes invaded Greece he had to build pontoon bridges, which were destroyed by a storm before completion. Xerxes was so upset at what happened that he had every engineer beheaded and sent soldiers down to whip the sea 300 times for its failure to obey him and comply with his plans. I think Dan Carlin talks about this on Hardcore History. If I remember correctly they branded it with hot irons, and threw shackles into it as well. Supposedly they also shit talked the water calling it briner and turbid while they beat it. During WW2 a bunch of German soldiers got separated in rural Russia, they were trudging through snow with no food or water for days before finally finding a supply drop that missed its mark. They opened it up and found only black pepper and condoms. Edit, for anyone wondering my source for this is Storm of War by Andrew Roberts. Unfortunately I can't remember the page number because I read the book a few years ago but I believe the chapter is called Clash of the Titans. I'm sorry I don't have more exact source but I'm a random commenter, not a history teacher. Welp, the pepper will temporarily make us feel warm, and as for the condoms. When in Rome. Ancient Romans would put sandals on the hands of sleeping people then tickle their face so they would slap themselves. Etchu, brute. The election of, Volodymyr Zelensky, https colon slash slash, en, dot wikipedia, dot org, slash wiki, slash Volodymyr underscore Zelensky close bracket as president of Ukraine. People talk about how crazy it is that a reality TV star got elected president of the US, but I think this story is even crazier. Zelensky was the star of a political satire show called, Servant of the People, https colon slash slash, en, dot wikipedia, dot org, slash wiki, slash servant underscore of underscore the underscore people closed bracket comma where he played the president of Ukraine. The show's last episode aired on the 28th of March, 2019. Three days later, Zelensky carried 30% of the popular vote in the first round of elections, almost double the number carried by the incumbent president Petro Poroshenko in second. Three weeks later in round two of the election, Zelensky won with 73% of the popular vote. This is like West Wing star Martin Sheen defeating George Bush to become president in 2004. Just seems like the type of thing that'll be turned into a great. Funny side fact about Zelensky. He plays a piano with his dick. As part of a comedy duo act. During the most critical portion of WWII, the Japanese thought they had sunk or disabled three American carriers when, in reality, they had only bombed the USS Yorktown three times. They were caught with their pants down when the bombs started landing at Midway. The documentary The Greatest Events of WWII in Color has a very nice episode about the Battle of Midway. Highly recommendable. Edit, it's on Netflix. Edit 2, Purple Sailor pointed the real name of the documentary out. In 1714. A Norwegian captain and an English captain had a 14-hour long ship fight. Afterwards, both ships were badly damaged and the Norwegian captain was running out of ammo. He sent an envoy to the English ship, asking if he could borrow some of their ammo. They said no. I'll send some promptly fires cannon. The Olympics used to award medals for art pieces. Famous sculptors of the time would display their sculptures for prizes. Harry S. Truman was a senator for 10 years, then became the vice president on the 20th of January, 1945. 82 days later, the 12th of April, he was sworn in as president and soon briefed on the Manhattan Project. Just 116 days later, on his orders, 
the atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima. In less than 200 days he went from senator, to VP, to president, and authorized the first use of nuclear weapons.